Hello, everyone. My name is Morgan DaCosta. I'm a product manager for our collaborative learning team. And I'm definitely not biased, but I think we save the best plugin for last. If I can borrow a little from Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. At Spotify, the collaborative learning team's mission is to drive impactful, equitable, peer-to-peer -peer technical learning culture within Spotify R&D, one that empowers people to work together, move faster, and innovate. My team provides the tools, learning experiences, and opportunities that unlock the potential of Spotify teams and individuals across the globe. One of the biggest examples of our work is Skill Exchange, our internal marketplace for on-the-job learning opportunities to develop and elevate homegrown knowledge and technical skills. The Skill Exchange is a powerful tool to promote a culture of self-led growth, with the rise of microservice architecture, we're seeing more developer teams operate in autonomous ways. Let's add our post-COVID reality to that picture where employees are distributed across the globe and spending less time in person together, fostering connections and trust. Even setting aside those factors, talent, knowledge, and experience can often get trapped inside organizational silos. It's very natural for people to get into their grooves and stay there. So on one side, you could have a developer who might be feeling stagnated, but who would be eager to learn and apply new skills given the opportunity. And on the other side, you might have a team about to go through the trouble of onboarding a temporary contractor because they don't know that the help they need is right there in their own org. Skill exchange can break those walls down to create new opportunities for learning and growth throughout your R&D community. And it's something we saw at Spotify a few years ago when we were growing our R&D organization at a breakneck pace. My team had been running what we call tech university courses on a variety of topics from intro level building for iOS and Android at Spotify, all the way up to deep dives on our experimentation platform. We saw great engagement at this formal learning level, but when it came to practical application of what people had learned, we didn't have a mechanism in place to get them hooked up with the right opportunities to practice their skills. People would find opportunities to temporarily join a team that needed support or a hack project through word of mouth or Slack channels. We did some further research and found that 85% of Spotifyers who participated in those opportunities reported those experiences resulted in the development of specific applicable technical skills. At the same time, we also found that many engineers, especially new joiners, didn't know what opportunities were available since they were primarily found through personal networks and word of mouth. So my team was doing a lot, I mean a lot, of manual pairing between needs and opportunities that we'd hear about from squads we worked with. Skill Exchange started as a hack project to provide more visibility to opportunities and scale the effort to connect Spotifyers to the experiences and people that could help them build their technical skills. It was met with rave reviews across our offices. People had been craving these points of connection that were grounded in work, but social by design. And they were harder to find as we went remote and transitioned to our work from anywhere policy during the pandemic. Since Skill Exchange was deployed internally, we've seen more than 1,000 monthly active users on average, with more than 500 opportunities for engineers to temporarily join other teams more than 200 mentorship connections, and more than 1,000 opportunities to hack on new ideas. With the Skill Exchange plugin, your R&D community can unlock opportunities for collaboration and meaningful connection, no matter where anyone sits in the org chart. Mentors can connect with mentees, teams can connect with temporary help, developers can pair up to program together, and ad hoc teams can assemble to work on hack projects. By making it easier for your developers to discover and borrow each other's skills, both teams and individuals can learn, grow, and stretch their abilities together, leading to happier, more fulfilled, and capable devs. So let's dive in on what Skill Exchange looks like within Backstage. The homepage of the Skill Exchange is the jumping off point for you to find people and experiences to help you build your skills. The main focus is the search bar where you can enter skills to find people in your organization who can help. Behind this search is the foundation of the skill exchange, your skill profile. On your entity profile page, users can display skills in two ways, skills I can help with and skills I'm learning. Skills are positioned this way on purpose. We're not here to boost our egos, but rather to share our unique skill context and perspective so our colleagues can find us when they need help and also invite others to help us develop the skills we want to learn. 
To add or modify your skills, select Edit Skills. Here, I'm going to update a skill that I've been learning. And I can also add a new skill. To do that, I'll select New Skill in the top right-hand corner. I'll give the skill a name and select a category as well as my current level of understanding. And I have the opportunity to specify it as a learning goal. Then I can select Save and see it displayed on my profile. You may have noticed that even though I rated my proficiency a level one, this appeared in skills I can help with because we believe you can often contribute to others even when you're learning. Now that I've updated my profile, let's see how this information is used when we do a skill search. I'll enter a search term. And once I press enter, I'll get a list of anyone who has added this skill to their profile. You can see I can also further narrow down this list by team members from a certain part of the organization. I'll also see the search results in the context of the other skills listed on a user's profile, which might help me determine who could best support me for the need that I have. Let's look at some other ways that I can find learning opportunities or get help from my colleagues, starting with embeds. On the embeds page, I can browse through a number of short-term opportunities to work on another team. I can also search for specific terms that I'm interested in. If I don't see an opportunity that matches what I'm looking for, I can also create a notification, which will save this search and send me Slack notifications with a direct link if any new posts match my save criteria. Basically, a user can set it and forget it and let Skill Exchange do the search work for them. Once I find an embed I'm interested in, clicking into the card, I'm able to see some additional information to learn more and decide if this is an opportunity that I want to pursue. There's some description information, the opportunity to review some links, and some important details about when and how long the embed is expected to be. If I want to contact the post owner, selecting contact, will allow me to send a message to the post owner, letting them know I'm interested in learning more about the embed opportunity. On to the next section of the tool, Mentor. So the Mentor page search and cards are similar to embeds, except they are grouped by the type of post, which is one of three options, offering to mentor, looking for a mentor, or looking to pair. The search works in the same way, and you can turn on notifications for search as well. If you open a card, you can see some very similar information and actions as with embeds. Overall, the cards for Mentor are simple on purpose. What we found from feedback is that people want to determine the level of detail they request or offer mentorship. In some cases, users are very specific about what they're looking for, and other times it's more open-ended with some broader themes. Let's take a look at the flow to create a post, and you'll see that you're prompted to select what objective you want up front. And then there's some simple fields to build your requests. So you can offer a very detailed explanation or again, be as broad as you wish to be. The last and maybe the most fun part of the skill exchange is the hack section. On the hacks tab, you can see a list of all the hacks within your organization. These are searchable, include a number of different criteria that you can use to filter and view hacks. When you open a hack, you'll see all the users who are collaborating on the hack any comments from other users, the status of the hack, whether you're looking for new team members, you're in progress, complete, or your efforts resulted in a dumpster fire, users can help other org members understand where the hack is right now. You also have the ability to follow a hack and receive updates about how it progresses. You can see this hack is also associated with a larger event, Hack Week 2023. We'll get more into that in just a second. But there's also a clear identification of skills needed so others know if their skills might help move the hack idea along. Finally, similar to embeds and hacks, you have the opportunity to let the hack owner know that you're interested in contributing, which will again send a message in Slack for you. All right, so going back to hack events, we have this separate section where you can group hacks together. Here at Spotify, we have a global hack week once a year where we see over 300 hacks happening in the span of one week. But we also have smaller hack events happening at different levels of the organization all the time and often running on a recurring basis. Creating an event is a great way to group these hacks and even inspire people to hack on strategic topics across the organization. When you create an event, you can also create voting sessions to provide more visibility to the hacks that are getting a lot of excitement. 
Even when hacks are completed, they live in the skill exchange as an archive of work. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Having seen firsthand every hack week, a Spotify wanting to hack on a new social listening feature. Instead, we can provide a record of the work that's already explored so users can connect with people and the work they may have already done and find new and exciting ways to innovate and build off those ideas and lessons learned. And that's the end of this demo. Thanks for checking out Skill Exchange. This is just the beginning. We have so many new features and functionality in store that we've tested internally and can't wait to share with you. Things like manager views, expanded skill support, and integration with formal learning activities like training courses.